Hey everyone, welcome back. So in the previous video, we saw how to compute the mean function of a time series. So in this video, we should take a look at the next concept that is the autocovariance function of a time series. So the autocovariance function is denoted by this uh, notation. So gamma XST, right? So X stands for the time series and S and T denote the time points. So gamma XST is basically the covariance between XS and XT. So we observe the time series at many different time points, right? So we want to look at the covariance uh, of the series at these different, different time points. So that's why this autocovariance function is a function of these time points. So whenever there is no confusion about the time series under consideration, we will skip this suffix or the subscript uh, x. So we'll just uh, use the, uh, the notation x, s and t. Remember s and t are the time points of interest. So the autocovariance measures the linear dependence between the two points on the same series observed at different times, right? So covariance is a measure, uh, covariance between two variables measures the linear relationship between them. So covariance of XS and, S, and XS and XT measures the linear relation uh, of the time series at these two time points. So again, smooth series exhibit autocovariance functions that stay large even when the time points T and S are far apart. So remember the moving average series that we plotted or that we saw in the earlier videos, right? So the larger the number of, uh, so the larger is the order of the moving average, the smoother was the graph, right? So choppy series tend to have autocovariance functions that are nearly zero for large separations, right? So extreme case is white noise. White noise, everything is uncorrelated. Uh, so, so that appears to be very, very choppy. So gamma ST is zero in the case that XS and XT are not linearly related but there could be a, some other dependent structure between them, right? They could be non-linearly related. So this covariance function or this covariance concept only talks about the linear relationship between them. So if covariance between two variables is zero, that means there is no linear relation between them, but there could be some other non-linear relation between them. So let's take a look at how to calculate the autocovariance uh, function of white noise. So this is the white noise. Gamma 1, 2 is basically covariance of uh, covariance of W1 and W2. And it is zero because we know that um, different points in the white noise are not correlated. Gamma 2, 2, which is basically covariance of W2, comma W2, which is nothing but variance of W2, which is sigma square. So note that variance of all of the time points is the same for white noise. And we can um, combine uh, these, uh, we can combine our observations and write the covariance function in a compact fashion like this. So gamma ts is zero if the time points are different right and gamma ts is sigma square if the time points are the same so this basically says that uh, for white noise uh, correlation or covariance is zero for distinct time points and a sigma square um, for if the time points are equal so take a look or take note of uh, the way in which i have uh, written down written down this auto -co covariance function uh, we're going to do this a lot in this course. Okay, so now if you want to look at um, autocovariance functions of moving averages or even autoregressive or, or, um, or autoregressive processes, um, we need to study covariance of linear combinations, right? So both of these time series involve linear combinations of different random variables. So we are going to take a brief look at how to, or we are going to review how to calculate covariance of linear combinations of random variables. 
So u is a linear combination of these x variables. V is another linear combination containing this, uh, these y variables, right? So covariance between u and v can be written like this. So I'm sure most of you or probably everyone has already studied this in, uh, in uh, 315. But I just want to uh, quickly review these concepts here. So to understand this formula a little bit better, let's simplify this, right? So let's take m is equal to 2. So u is a1x1 plus a2x2. And let's take r is equal to 1. So v is just this guy. So now if I want to open this formula, right? Now if I want to write covariance between u and v, it will look like this. So what this formula does is I'm taking combinations of each pair of variables from u and v. So I have a1, x1 and b1, y1 first. So covariance between x1 and y1, that's here. Then I look at the second term, a2, x2 and b1, y1. And that appears here in this covariance formula. So now if I have r is equal to 2 instead, how will the covariance between u and v look like? So we'll follow the same thing, right? First, we'll write the covariance between uh, this first term and this first term in v. So first, we'll look at, let's see, this term and this term. Then we'll look at x1 and y2. Then we'll look at x2 and y1 and x2 and y2. So we're looking at each pair of variables, right? So why does this result hold or basically how can we derive this result on our own? So I'm just going to work out the calculations for the simple case where I have two variables in u and just one variable in v. So always start from basic definitions, right? So the goal is to calculate covariance between u and v. We know that covariance between any two random variables has this formula, right? Regardless of what u is and what v is, this formula is true. So always start from the basic definition. So expect so this involves expectation of u. So expectation of u is this guy. Then we'll calculate expectation of v. So we're going step by step, right? We have the covariance of u. It involves expectation of u and expectation of v. So we first calculate those and then and then we're going to go back and plug this in this covariance formula. So covariance between u and v is can be rewritten in this fashion. So I've plugged in the values for expectation of u here, and this is expectation of v. And then you're just gonna do some algebra. You're gonna open up these terms and rearrange them. So make sure you go through these calculations line by line uh, if you are not familiar with uh, these sort of things. So finally, you end up with this formula a1 b1 and covariance of x1 y1 a2 b2 covariance of x2 y1 right so we take this variable x1 and y1 and then this second uh, uh, combination of these two terms So that is all for this video. In the next video, we shall see how to calculate autocovariance function of a moving average process. Bye.